Before this video starts, I just want to point out that I now actually live stream daily on Twitch. I'm sure you guys all do have Twitch or do just watch some other streamers over there. So I thought I'd just let you guys know that I am now streaming every single day. So what I want you guys to do is to quickly go into the description of this video. I will link my channel right at the top where you guys can go and drop me a follow. It literally takes two seconds. If you guys are maybe on your phone right now, maybe you're on a computer, you can literally just load it up in a new tab and quickly just drop a follow. It's all much appreciated. And the content which you don't see on my YouTube channel, you will see over there live. So I just thought I'd quickly plug that. Yo guys, what is going on? It's your boy Farfetch here, back with a brand new YouTube video. In today's video, as it has been requested a lot, I'm going to be showing you guys my Fortnite settings. Everywhere from my keybinds to my graphic settings, which actually optimize my game and make me play on the best frames possible. I'm also going to be showing you guys a few more secret things. So trust me guys, you will want to watch to the end of this video, therefore you do not miss anything. If you guys do go ahead to enjoy the video, you know what to do, drop a like for me, really to support the channel. You can also subscribe with post notifications turned on, therefore you never miss an upload and also if you can't tell i'm extremely sick like i'm so ill right now and i probably sound it that's why my voice maybe sounds a little bit different but i'm still grinding out content for you guys but with that being said let's just hop straight into the video As you guys can see, we have the settings open. I'm going to start off with the video settings. So it's kind of simple. My window mode is full screen. If you guys play in anything other than full screen, you're just doing it wrong. Trust me. Even if you think it benefits you in any way, it really doesn't. Full screen is the best. It gives you the best input time to your game and reduces input lag, which you may get using any other windowed modes. Full screen is just simply the best. I'm sure all of you guys know that. Going down to my resolution, you guys can see it's 1920 by 1080, but I actually don't use this resolution. I don't know why it's glitched, but it has. There the resolution I actually use for my game is 1904 by 1071. I'm almost certain 50% of you guys watching this video have not heard of that resolution. So if you have not, I actually made a video talking about all of it yesterday. I'm going to leave a link at the top of the description. So after this video is finished, you guys can go and watch that and learn more about that resolution and why I use it. But basically, it does help increase FPS and it's also insane for making your game feel smoother. It felt as if I was going from 60 hertz to 144 hertz. That's how big the difference is. Like I use 144 hertz. That's like the switch. That's a comparison between the switch from native to 1904 by 1071. That's like the comparison and how good it really feels. Moving down to my frame rate limit, I have this on 165. I have this cap. If you guys are not capping your FPS, you're literally doing it wrong. I know a lot of people are still using unlimited FPS, but it's not the way to go. If you guys are running on systems over 100 FPS and you have an 144 hertz monitor, you guys want to cap your FPS at 165. If you have a 240 hertz, you want to cap it at 240. And if you have anything below and run at any lower FPS than 100, you want to even just cap it on 60 or you can actually do it on a limited it doesn't really matter if you're below 100 fps but for those on 144 hertz you do want to be capping on 165 i'm not sure what it is but it's again something to do with input lag and if you don't cap your fps not only will your fps not be as stable and consistent but you'll also experience a tiny bit of input lag and delay to your game which you probably don't realize but it is a big difference and it's kind of a make or break in many competitive situations for my graphics you guys can see my brightness is 100 percent user interface i just have it normal this is the same club line many pros use. I know Clicks uses this. I think it's just nice and it makes the zone look a lot better. In my opinion, this is the best colorblind mode and it just balances out the colors. I've tried each and every one and Detroit Nope has worked out best for me. For all of my graphics quality stuff, you guys can see that. I have basically everything on low or off besides my view distance. You guys do not want to have your view distance on near or epic. You guys want to have it on medium. I know Booger, he is a pro player who is doing this. It's kind of a little tip that not many people know about. I don't know how it does it. Your game will just run a lot smoother. Frame rate will be more stable and again, consistent for competitive having this on medium is perfect and you'd literally get better fps with this on medium rather than having it on near which is kind of surprising and then moving down to advanced graphic v-sync i have of course off you guys want to have v-sync turned off unless you are playing on a 60 hertz monitor or unless you are below 100 fps motion blur you want off show fps i just have it on direct x version i have it on direct x 11 if you guys are using a low-end graphics card anything basically below a 1080 ti you guys will want to use direct x 11 if you have maybe a 27 a 2060, 2080, or a 1080, maybe you guys do want to use DirectX 12. It's kind of self explanatory. If you have a low end system, DirectX 11 will work better. It's actually the same for this as well multi fed rendering. I have mine turned off. I have quite weak hardware and a lower end system. I use a 1050 Ti graphics card, which isn't the best, so I have this on off because basically my graphics card can't handle it. And if I was to have it on, I experience hitches and FPS drops, which just isn't good. But again, if you have a higher end system and do run on DirectX 12, you'll want to have this on because your game will run better. And that is about it for the video settings. 
Moving on to my game settings, I'm not going to stick on these for too long. I will explain a few things, but a lot of it is just looking and copying the settings if you really want to use them. But right here, you know, my movement, toggle sprint is off, sprint by default is on, sprint cancels reload off, and auto open doors is on. They're all like the basic things you need. I already do suggest you guys do copy these settings and try them out. For combat, kind of just simple. I guess you should just copy these settings. There isn't really much to speak about with these. Building, reset building choice. You, of course, want that on. Turbo building, you, of course, want on. And this is actually preference but I do not use confirm edit on release. I also do use only one edit bind which is the edit bind G which I will talk more about when I go into my key binds. The reason I use one edit bind is because I try and keep my key binds as optimal as possible and is easy but we'll talk about that later in the video. But yeah confirm edit release I have off. Personally I just don't like it. Many other pro players do not use this but I guess it's whatever you prefer but I have it off. You don't need it to edit fast and all these other settings I'm just going to show you guys. One thing I can suggest if you are getting lower FPS and you want to increase FPS in your game, NVIDIA highlights you should turn off. And also in your replay section, record replays, record large team replays, and record creative mode replays all need to be turned off. This will help you maximize your FPS and push the most out of your game. Now moving on to my mouse sensitivity. My X and Y axis sensitivity are both on 17.5. My targeting sensitivity is 51% and so is my scope sensitivity. I basically just have them all matching. This targeting sensitivity is from another pro player called Luminosity Frosty. Pretty has the best aim on keyboard and mouse so i do use this scope and targeting sensitivity which works perfect for me i use a logitech g pro wireless mouse which is extremely light and i also use 400 dpi so my sensitivity kind of levels out and this is not high sense and it's also not low sense i use medium sense i guess it's kind of preference but for me and for my mouse the weight of it this is absolutely perfect you just can't go wrong with it and also i may as well just show you my audio settings all you guys really need to see is my sound quality i do have on a high again another fps tip if you are getting low fps and want to increase that make sure your sound quality is on low having this on low actually does increase performance maybe 5 to 10 fps but that is a difference and every little does help 3d headphones i've turned off background audio i have turned off personally they're terrible and 3d headphones you don't want to use again it is also preference visualized sound effects i have turned on very surprising but i feel like many pro players will start taking this into use having this turned on audio is still the same you also get that additional help from seeing footsteps on screen which can help in some scenarios honestly it's a meta and you guys should probably try visualize sound effects out and just give it the chance since i changed it and then enabled this feature i have not took it off now guys for the final thing i'm going to show you guys my keybinds again as i said these are all optimal keybinds i have used these keybinds ever since i started playing fortnite i started playing the game in season three switched over to keyboard and mouse roughly around season six or season seven and since then all the way till now i have been using these keybinds and they have worked perfect and i've never really had to change them again they're super optimal they're all virtually centered to the keyboard like i've never had issues stretching my hand out too far everything is just there for me and easily accessible they're super comfortable and anyone can get used to them for my movement binds it's wasd kind of simple for my jump i have space bar and i also have mouse wheel up that's basically to do b hearts which can come into use in some situations again it's not a make or break you do not need to put that on it's kind of just fun for my sprint bind i actually do use cap locks usually this is shift and then for crouch it's cap lock I actually switch these two around. I don't know how it is, but when I place my fingers on the keyboard, the finger right next to my pinky just basically relaxes on top of cap locks. So I think that's just perfect to run. So my movement is basically perfect, and then crouch is just on left shift. I feel like a lot of people do do this. For my weapon slots, I do have them all the same. I feel like it just works the best. For use, I have an E. Harvesting tool, I actually use on Q. It's right next to the W key. So what's more perfect than just have it right next to your W key? And also right below your weapon slots. Again, easily accessible. Reload. I have an R, I did not change that. And then all of my building binds are here. For my stairs and walls, I do use thumb mouse buttons, which are on the side of the Logitech G Pro wireless. Basically, I just have side buttons on my mouse. And yeah, they work perfectly for building. And things such as my floor, I have as F. My roof, I have as T. And my trap, I have V. Again, all central to the keyboard and right near each other. They don't get in the way of my movement binds, so they're really easy to locate and work with when building. And everything else, you guys can kind of see. Again, my building edit is on G. And the reason I have building edit and reset building edit as a second bind for mouse wheel down it's because i do use mouse wheel reset which everyone should be using if they play on keyboard and mouse 
And that, guys, is basically it for my in-game settings. Again, very simple and optimal keybinds. They're really great, and I think you guys should all try them out. And for the last thing before I actually end the video, I'm going to quickly show you guys my NVIDIA control panel settings. So if you guys are using an NVIDIA graphics card, this is kind of a bonus thing for you guys. But I'm going to show on screen right now. As I said, I put all my control panel settings. If you guys do want to copy these, you can. You guys may have to pause the video and copy them out. But these are the best NVIDIA control panel settings you can use that help boost performance and basically squeeze the most out of your game and just PC in general. Super great graphics card settings and really did benefit me and my game. So I suggest you guys do use these to your advantage. And with that all being said, that is all I have for you guys today. I thought I'd show you guys these as I have been telling you guys I would do it for a while now and you guys are really getting impatient with it. So I thought I'd just drop the video. If you guys did get to the end of the video or did enjoy this one bit, I'm surely doing my job right. So the least you guys can do for me, just slap a like on the video. Really does support the channel more than you think. Subscribe if post notifications turned on therefore you never miss an upload just like this there's like 40 percent of people on my channel who watch my videos and just don't subscribe it really doesn't make sense it's easier if you just drop a sub so make sure you guys get that done again it's really appreciated hope you all enjoyed the video hope you guys have a great day it's been your boy farfetch and yeah peace